Hi guys, welcome to my channel. My name is Natisha and today I wanted to give you my personal testimony um, in regards to my journey to Christ, being a soldier in this army, working for the kingdom of God. Um, so we'll just begin from the beginning and I'll try not to be all over the place, bring it on in and not have this video be super, super long, but we'll begin in the beginning. In the beginning was the birth of Natisha and um, my mother had me in church since I was born and that was the first seed that was planted for me. She um, was a Christian. My dad was a Christian but he didn't really, he didn't go to church with us initially when I was little. So my first example in my later like the first leader for me or first per seed that was planted for me was my mother she brought me to church um she went when i was younger faithfully sundays and wednesdays so that's what i knew sundays and wednesdays i was at church with my mother um and that being said uh fourth grade i took it upon myself made the decision i wanted to get baptized so in fourth grade, I got baptized. This is before I had a major surgery in my life. So I got baptized because I saw that that was necessary steps that was um, being shown to me in the church. To give you some context, I'm um, Pentecostal. I grew up in the PAW um, establishment church. My pastor was able to preach and he was able to teach. He was very doctrinally sound. He had um, a seminary background and he was fire. Um, so he was a good example of a pastor that you want to be under. Um, his church when I grew up was like a cathedral kind of establishment and it was always packed from the bottom level to the top level. I, I always saw that church packed and you say his name people know who he is even though he's deceased he's been deceased since i think i was like a sophomore in high school he's been deceased since then and the leadership that took after him again was fire and um uh was able to preach and teach but i kind of went to college a little bit more during that leadership and then when i came back the leadership that's there now he's fire able to teach and preach too so good three leaderships that took over my church um, that I grew up in. But needless to say, I was a Pentecostal, grew up in the PAW. Um, that's all I knew. So, um, so fourth grade, I got baptized and I didn't really know all the logistics behind it. I didn't know really, really what I was um, stepping into as a follower for Christ um they the leadership spoke to me about the Holy Ghost Spirit right after I was baptized but after that I never really never was referred to it again after that not even from my mother like I didn't hear too many people talk about it you know um and I, I definitely will contest today in my life you need the Holy Ghost Spirit for guidance everything like you need it so anyways let's go into the next journey of my life i um i participated in activities at church i went to vacation bible school in the summer um i went i was in the choir for years of my young adult and childhood and adult our teenage life um the choir was my thing i was even in choir in high school my high school, the gospel choir, and I was also in choir in college. <clears throat> I participated in um, ladies' activities at the church. Um, we used to have a ladies' retreat every year. Loved it. They would take a group of girls, teenagers, um, young girls to a college, and we would discuss topics um and to this day those topics i remember as if we just spoke about them yesterday like though those are the seeds that were planted to 
planted in me as a young adult and I remember them to this day like for, for an example we discussed um, demons coming into your room at nighttime and what how you should handle that and long and behold I had experienced that and I was able to move forward with that so a lot of the things that I learned in those conferences were very helpful later on in life so that being said um i was a very carnal christian i didn't the bible was just deemed as supplementary i didn't read the bible that much i read it when it was at church i read it when it was at sunday school i read it when i was participating in church activities but it was deemed supplemental i didn't read it on a daily basis nor did I pray on a daily basis. Um, I did understand the power of prayer because there were certain things that I prayed for that the Lord did answer the prayers. I understood that, but I didn't pray on a daily basis, nor was it, um, it wasn't emphasized for me to do so. Not for my church or my church family, but in my home. It wasn't emphasized to read the Bible every day. It wasn't emphasized to pray every day. Um, so I, le I lived a very carnal Christian lifestyle where you go to church on Sunday, but you're back in your normal activities Monday through Saturday, where there was no conviction of any sin, specific, you know, and I don't even know if I have really prayed to have my sins forgiven on a regular basis either. But it definitely was no conviction. I was not um, a bad kid. But I did things that a Christian shouldn't do. Um, and I'm trying to keep this testimony like honed in because I have plenty of testimonies that branch out from this one. But I did stuff that a Christian wasn't supposed to do. And... How the Lord had took my life any of those times, I probably, I don't know. Don't know which direction I would have went. Thank you, Lord, for your grace and your mercy and your forgiveness. Um, so <clears throat> there was no reading of the Bible on a regular basis. There was no praying, but I did go to church on Sundays. Um, I did continue to be in choir throughout high school and college. College, I never really found my home church. Um, I visited a lot of churches in college, but I never found my home church and I never made it a regular thing. I never connected with other Christians on campus. I did a lot of partying. I did a lot of drinking. I did a lot of things that a Christian shouldn't do. I did. And again, thank you Lord for your grace and your mercy and forgiveness. Um, and I didn't read the Bible. I don't even know if I had my Bible with me when I was in college. No, I don't think I did. So fast forward, um, that was pretty much my life all through college, 20s. And then I hit a year of uh, tribulation. And this is the year of a whole year of tribulation that pushed me so i and i say to you if you don't humble you humble yourself god will humble you and that is exactly what he did beforehand i was very um prideful arrogant and i thought you know what i'm saying oh i can get it if i want it i can get it never did i put much in the lord's hands so the year of 2000 and 13, that was my humble year, the entire year. <laughs> Let me tell you, it humble yourself, because if God humbles you, boy, be ready. <laughs> and I don't think you can even be ready for his humbleness. But that year, it was starting in January, one event after the next, and after the next. And it wasn't, I mean, honestly, even in those events in 2013, still didn't 100% put me on my face. And then the end of the year, November 
2013, my mother got diagnosed with breast cancer. So that officially started my journey and I went from there. But you know what? Let me back it up a little bit. Before 2013, I would say about 2000 and... <clears throat> eight or nine um the veil was taken off my eyes in regards to the music interest industry um i was at work with one of my co-workers and we started talking about and he was a christian too subliminal messages in music and then we went from there to find out the secret society in music and before then I loved music I loved every artist theme most female artists out there I um I was a huge huge fan of Beyonce and Aaliyah and um Keisha Cole and and I even had some of Jay-Z's albums that specific day the Lord was like no I'm going to give you some truth. And I have not looked back since then. I do not like no <laughs> secular music, especially the ones where the artists essentially sell their souls. So that started a little bit of the journey, but not so much. It was not until my mother's diagnosis that kind of kicked me in gear. And But, it, <sighs> child, kicked me in gear. So 2013... The whole year there was event after event 2014 it let up a little bit but then there was stuff in 2014 2015 so basically i got humbled between 2013 14 and 15. those are my humbling years it, i used to say it was just 2013 but it was all three 2014 i was ultimately humbled um i had hit a bottom rock bottom like to a point where like I needed to move forward with the Lord otherwise it wasn't looking too good um, and I couldn't do nothing without the Lord and so I got to the point where I was playing the Bible app it was reading the Bible from from front to beginning back to back I just kept it playing on my computer in my room just playing it over and over and over and then I would fast and then I would do communion and then one day while I was doing face down prayer which is laying on your belly and praying um the Holy Ghost hit me I felt the spirit and that's the first time really I felt the spirit and from then forward like I moved and um, I was going forward with the Lord and then my mother passed away in 2019 and between and that was in July between my mother passing away her passing caused a little it was a little bit of chaos um, in my family afterwards the enemy enemy came at my job literally after my mom passed away there was chaos in my family <clears throat> um the enemy was messing spiritual warfare hit the enemy was messing with my job the enemy um my brother i was in the hospital and my marriage enemy messed with my marriage so right after that and then 2020 hits with the pandemic and 2020 was definitely my year where I didn't want nobody, nothing but Jesus. I didn't want nothing of this world but Jesus. His word, I started like watching. I mean, everybody's, there were so many videos of like the rapture. <laughs> The glory is coming back. Get your house on order kind of situation. But I don't think I haven't. I, that's the, the was the beginning of me really watching a whole lot of faith related content. Before then, I was 
just watching beauty related content. I have a whole nother channel that's just beauty related content, which I still love, but it's on the back burner at this moment. But I mean, 2020, like I just felt like I lost my mother. And I kind of felt like I lost a little bit of my family at the same time, my mother's family. And that was a hard pill to swallow because I'm really close to my mother. And then the pandemic hit and we were shut in and could not do nothing. And it felt like <laughs> crazy times. But in that time, in, in that time, I went in with the word i went in with prayer i went in with listening to pastors i you know a lot of carnal stuff i don't get with no more um i definitely don't do hardly anything that i did before in life um and i'm at this point where i just want to please the lord I want to do God's work. I want to work for his kingdom. I don't want to be a lukewarm um, servant of God. Um, <clears throat> and that sometimes I did feel like I was being lukewarm. And he was like, God was like telling me, you have a platform. Use it. Because I don't really have a lot of communication with people. I work from home. So, YouTube. <laughs> but now I'm just working on my consistency of reading every day. I do listen to pastors pretty much every day or I listen to podcasts or faith related channels. That's my thing now. That's my jam. It should have been my jam from the beginning. <laughs> but needless to say, that is my journey to um my journey for falling after Christ. It probably could have been a little smoother had I known some information back then that I know now but at the same time it developed my character it developed my testimony I have many testimonies outside of just this one but this is just I just wanted to just talk about my journey with Christ like he kept me he kept me through the times where I didn't give him no attention he kept me when I did stupid things and I did stupid things <laughs> and it's not funny but at the same time I think you know I rather be pleasing of the Lord than pleasing of man I rather work on my eternal home and not just me I'm wanting to help anybody that I know work on their salvation and their eternal eternal homes um, my kids are my first disciples you know and it, they have it hard like this world for them is rough I had to tell my youngest um one of my youngest like the path of living the life for Christ is narrow it's going to be a lot of things you're not going to be able to do watch participate see all that and it's worth it <laughs> to please the Lord the creator of, of us so that was my testimony like one of my testimonies I may come back and talk about others I have testimonies about some surgeries I had in life testimonies about finances testimony about marriage testimony about single life and motherhood <laughs> so Thank you for listening to my testimony. Um, I hope that you're seeking the Lord first in all of his righteousness. Seek him. Seek and develop a relationship with Christ for yourself outside of church. Have your own relationship with Christ. That's one major thing. Also That's that one major thing also that I learned in 2020 is developing a relationship with the Lord for yourself. No the word know the scripture be able to test pastors who are preaching with the word if they're not preaching the word then you might want to say peace you might want to find another pastor who is doctrinally sound not giving fluff fluff or not a inspirational leader 
Um, but anyways, thank you for watching my video. Continue to open up your Bibles, read the word, pray, and I'll see you guys in the next one.